All right, hallelujah. Glory to the king. Abba Yah, we thank you for all things. We thank you for allowing us uh, to be in your kingdom and to have our names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. For this we rejoice. Father, we need your word, that word that fulfills our spirit, our soul. We need it because it is the lamp unto our feet, the light unto our paths, and we definitely need our paths lit it as we continue to go on in this journey. We thank you for the Ruach who has never left us or forsaken us. We've often left him and forsaken him, but he has been faithful and true to his word. I thank you for being so honorable. We really truly do. We, we need you, Father. That's just a fact. In every step of our life, we need you. Thank you for granting us breath to have another day uh, to continue on, hopefully in your shalom. We do need ministering too. So send forth ministering angels to block all the wicked demonic communication that may take place in the spirit of the mind to try to come back to word. Let that truth sink deep down in our hearts. We give you the glory for all things. Magnificent name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. You may be seated. All right. Everybody all right? All right. Now, I had an extraordinary amount of uh, what you call lettuce, but I chose to forego them and just kind of summarize it up uh, here on a piece of paper. All right. So I guess we're going to do tour portion that way here this morning, all right? Now, when, when the apostle Saul said that I speak to them that know the law, that doesn't mean you know it. He was talking to them people at that time. So don't you assume that you know it. You're learning it, but you don't know it. And that's not an insult, that's just a fact. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Mike says, what I came here for. Hallelujah. The idea is so we can know it, right? Because we, we want to know the mind of Yah. Isn't that right? All right. So let's go on here. Matter of fact, I just answered. Uh, Brother Richard the other day he was in the dining hall, him and I was talking, and he was speaking to me about what he had said to someone. And um, it's ironic that the same question came up again. And um, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. And they said, Pastor, how can I get over the negative feelings that will occur if I see another woman hugging and kissing my husband? You have any negative feelings if you see another uh, man kissing your daughter or your son, your little baby? I mean, look how many babies we got in here. Have you ever have jealousy and envy dealing with you when I'm, or somebody else is smooching all over your baby? Why? There's no fear in love. But what the answer I gave was, see the problem number one is possession. See when you believe you have ownership of something, when it's a scriptural fact that he owns you, You're going to function out of order. And that's what we have today. We have an out of order society where women are trying to not only play the role of a man, but they're trying to have the same attitude, the same mindset, and the construct of a man. And this society has done a good job at confusing you. Are y'all listening? Now, again, let me put a lot of people's mind to ease. Just because I'm talking about biblical marriage or the subject of multiple wives or polygyny or something like that doesn't mean the whole world is going to participate in it even though you're already in it anyway ain't too many of you women were virgins when you got married or so called married let me say married by the state if we're going to be concretely uh oh You know, everybody loves the truth until it comes on it. We want the truth. We want the truth. We want the truth. You do, huh? We need to get a two by four and, and write the word truth on it. 
Hallelujah. Proceed. Let's just go ahead and get this right. We, we're coming from Hebraic thought, okay? We're not coming from the Western mindset. We're coming from the Hebrew thought. And what I said to Brother Rich yesterday, was it yesterday, Brother Rich? Okay, day before, I'm going to say it again, at least try to say the same thing today. All right? Um, anytime you have what you call a sister that is coming to the family, all right, she has become part of that family. All right? And when she comes part of that family, the uh, principal wife, the one that's already there, according to Proverbs 31, she is charged to be the wisdom. Not the contention, not the strife. She, she is charged to make sure that her household is in order so that everybody else in there will rise up and say, you know what, you are truly blessed. Is that making sense? And when this principal wife has an invested interest in the wife that comes in, and she has shared with her and taught her how to love the husband. You getting that? There won't be any contentious. Matter of fact, you'll be elated and excited and ecstatic that she's able to experience the same love that you're able to experience. So if you see her hugging or kissing, the husband, you won't be sitting up there full of jealousy. I'm going to put it on y'all now, okay? Do you see me uh, about to lose my mind because I see y'all in here worshiping and dancing and praising him? That's just what we just got finished doing. We singing a song, but we ain't, we ain't thinking about each other. You can tell that. We, we, our mind is on him. Now, how would that look at you up there jumping and shouting and, and carrying on, and I'm sitting up here looking at you like that? Yeah. He's mine. I'm up here all disturbed. I can't even play a note on the instrument because here you are. That, that happened with David. David said, man, I'm going to show you how much I love y'all. And what that woman say, his wife say, yeah, look at you, king, of parading your hand off up in front of all them girls. Making yourself vile. Don't that sound like some of you American woman? Tell the truth. See, we've already had this attitude dealt with before. The reason why I keep pounding this drum is because everybody else is too afraid to pound it. They're scared of it. Here's David praising the Most High Yah, dancing before the Ark of the Covenant, and this woman is all upset. Why? Because she's concerned about his nakedness and how other women are looking at him. Well, do you think David was concerned about women looking at him? He had his mind 100% totally on the most high y'all. That's like some of you are getting mad and jealous because somebody can worship y'all and have a more intimate, closer relationship with him than you do. See, we don't like it, do we? It's just the truth. See, this culture is, is done programmed you and what you need is you need a you don't need a defrag you need a total wipe as a matter of fact you need to take out that old hard drive and put a hard drive and put in a solid state drive one that you don't have to defrag y'all remember when you used to have to defrag your computer you thought you was doing something you see them little dots and lines and colors go through there wait I'm defragging my computer so why so that it can run better is that telling you something? Man, you ain't never been through a defragging process. That's why you ain't running no better. See, that's the preacher coming out. And because you're supposed to run this race with what? Patience.
Let's get this right. The husband owns you. He don't own me. What, what does the scripture say? I know what society says. If you're coming from that perspective, I understand your mindset. But if you're coming from the biblical perspective, I don't understand your mindset. And you are his possession. Why do you think he had to pay a bride price for you? Ain't nobody paid no bride price for me. Probably because you wasn't worth nothing. Don't start nothing with me. Now, you know I'm dealing with more people besides what's in here, right? But if you get hit, holla. Doesn't it make your heart hurt that you wasn't even reared and raised right? You know how rich we could have been if we could have got a bride price for every dollar sign in here? We could have bought, we could have had at least 50 head of cattle by now. Nice fat savings account. You would have kept yourself. If that man really loved you, he'd have worked seven years for you. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We don't like that now, do we? I love it. Well, you love it because you're the man. Since when being the man alleviates responsibility? You should be happy that we're at least making an attempt of trying our best in this restoration thing. Because you ain't going to find nobody else trying to do it like this. They got this goddess movement going on. I heard it again this week. The woman is the head of the house. I go, so I, I go to the Bible, and then after, oh, I, I figure, oh, that's that Egyptology stuff. Almighty Isis. See how you become a villain? Talk about the things that people don't want you to talk about. Even though they need to be talked about. Hallelujah. This way is just holy and right. But you wouldn't have a jealous heart if you do this thing right. If your husband chooses to. You can ask a lot of men when they see what's going on in this country they don't want another one, a woman and a woman don't even really want another man. After they made one attempt at marriage and stuff and they see the way these bootlickers are they don't want to try to do that again. But the truth is see women you don't understand your heart. Very few women turn down marriage. Very few. Because there's a, a nature that's in you for companionship. Mm -hmm. Usually, when a man is interested in you and he's a fairly decent looking man, you're excited. If he's ugly like me, you can pass. Ain't that right, Brother Mike? He said, no, nah, I didn't want him because he, 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 there you go. I didn't want him, boy. He just, see, it ain't, it ain't no big deal when you, you reject me because I ain't your type, whatever type that is. There's only one type, man. Let me go up here behind this pulpit real quick, man. Because other than that, they, there's other, others outside of. And that is forbidden. You can't be going out here saying, well, my type, and then bring a, a, a cow in here dropping dung all the way down the aisle. What other type is it then? Oh, boy. So I hope you got that one. The next one is talents. Talents, talents, talents. 
Bro, saying it in Matthew 25, verse 14. Talents is a. And the question is basically about uh, talents in his life. That's pretty simple. All right. See, when you read these accounts, are y'all really listening to this one? And you realize that in this life, the king went far away and he gave you some talents. See, when you read the story, you read it fairy tale. I understand the principles of it. And what about the talents that he's given you? I know the account said he gave one five, one two, and one one. And then he went away into a far journey. Is that right? And then when he came back, he was expecting a what? An increase. Now, who gave you the talent? Who gave you your breath? Who gave you your life? Who gave you the Ruah HaKadosh? Who gave you the mind? Because some of you just, book-wise, you just, you're totally smarter than I am. See, we can tell what you are based on the reflection of this word right here when we're looking in his mirror. See, some of you, he's given five talents and you're still busy working on increasing them talents while you're living here in his life. Some of you, he's given two and you're working on that, doubling that while you're here in his life. Some of you, he has given one and you wicked as hell. You lazy, sluggard, you excuse making, you ain't going to let him have any profit even though he's the one who gave it to you. Because you don't get to personally benefit from the investment. And so your life reflects what these parables are. Read, Brother Shane. Listen to the book. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. All right. See what that kingdom of heaven is like? Come on. Who called his own servant. He called his what? Own servant. Read on. And delivered unto them his goods. All right. Come on. And unto one he gave five talents. Let me ask you something. Don't the scripture say we differ nothing from a what? So are you servants? Okay then. See, we, what we do is we look at this book. And we all oh, look at here. You need to start putting you in there. Oh, I just use me as an example. Is that all right? So I can give my enemy some fodder. Okay? I'll use me as an example. You have a five, you have a two, and you have a one. All right? If we was to look at the reflection of this account right here, and you look at Pastor Dow, you would say, how many talents that the master gave me? You said he gave me five. Wouldn't you say that? Just by the reflection of my life. Is that right? Now, am I busy increasing these talents or am I, do I got the attitude of the one? Oh, we working. Why? Because I want what that one got. Read. To another two and to another one. So he's giving out talents, right? And he gives to every man according to the ability that he has placed in them. Doesn't mean that one person is greater than the other. He's giving you according to your ability. Because when it's all said and done, the gifts, everything is all for the body so that we may all profit. Not no say everybody get up here. Look at me. Look at me. It's supposed to be that'll benefit us all. Oh, no, you ain't never heard this. You ain't going to go on the inner line and check it out. It ain't there. Read on. To every man according to his several abilities. Uh, there it is. Read on. And straightway. And straightway. Took his journey. He took his journey. Is not the king in the kingdom? Huh? Hmm? Is he not? He's on a journey right now. He's going to come back again. Is that right? He's coming back again, right? Huh? Read on. 
Then he that had received the five talents. Then he that received the five. Let's see what the attitude is. Went and traded with the same. He went and traded with the same. He knew where to go. Is that right? Come on. And made them other five talents. Wow. He knew exactly what to do. Huh? He knew exactly what to do in order to profit. Read on. And likewise, he that had received two, uh -huh. he also gained other two. Now, the, the point I want to bring out in here is that whatever you got is being given to you. We're going to stick with the principle of the word, all right? Are y'all getting this? <laughs> How can y'all hold y'all self in this seat right there with this good preaching like this, man? What are y'all doing? Passing gas and relief? I mean, what y'all doing? This is some good word right here. Read on. <laughs> but he that had received one. Uh-oh. Went and digged in the earth. He went and did what? Digged in the earth. Come on. And hid his master's money. He hid whose money? His master's. Are you not a purchase possession? I said to a preacher the other day, I said, if you can't understand that this whole thing from better sheet all the way to Hazum is all about marriage, you'll never understand the law, the instructions. You'll never understand the Torah at all. Yeah, we all purchase possessions. Some of you he paid a little bit more for. So he give you five. Some of you paid and halfway account. So he gave you two. Some of you, you weren't worth a damn, but he still bought you anyway. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> It's a revival message. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, I actually view myself in that one talent category, but I didn't go bury it. Because when he bought me, I wasn't worth paying for. But apparently he saw something that I didn't see. He said, I'm going to buy this one. Oh, hallelujah. Read, Brother Shane. After a long time. After a long time. Seems like it's taking a long time for him to come back, too, don't it? Read on. The master of those servants cometh. Uh-huh. And reckoneth with them. He reckoned with him. Keep going. We're going to go to the 22nd verse, Brother Shane. Read. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents. So now he's getting ready to lay at the master's feet. <clears throat> what he's done with what was given to him. Let me ask you a question. What are you going to be able to lay at the master feet with what you've done with your life? Uh, are you too tired to do anything? Do you have excuses that your day is full and you ain't got enough time to work for the kingdom? Even though your life is the kingdom? No matter what you do. Huh? Word or deed. Do it heartily as unto the master. Isn't that right? Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you drag down jobs? Do you ghost and sham? Do you make excuses? Do you have a one-talent attitude or a five-talent attitude? Can you imagine that five-talent man that had that profit? He couldn't wait till the king come. Let me ask you your attitude. Y'all, you the five? They can't wait till the king come? See, because if you've been doing what you're supposed to have been doing, you'll be rejoicing when the king comes. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, don't worry about it. The way this kingdom works, everything you got, you're still going to give it back to him. Because in the kingdom, some of us are going to receive crowns. We all got the crown of life, right? Uh oh, but then there are other crowns. And it says when it all said and done, we're going to look at him and go, man, yeah, come on. I couldn't do this without you. Huh? How could I be a help to somebody else with all my help coming from you, which made heaven and earth? I know who gave me what I got. I know who made me who I am. Hallelujah. 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 You're the one and the only one that is worthy of all these crowns. And you know what? We're going to be glad to give it right back to him again. And then he's going to turn around and say, it's good, servant. Now you are ready to judge angels. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read on. And he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Master. Master. Thou deliverest unto me five talents. You gave me. We ain't speaking English the way they translate it. You gave me. We're going to just come on down, okay? Come on down where I can understand, okay? All right, you gave me five, so here is, read. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Mm. He already had to work with what he already had, and then he had to double that which he had already attained to. See, your life, when y'all brought you into this thing, he gave you the ability to produce. And some of you have done shorts change production. Uh-oh. See, you have to meet the quota first in, the, in production. Is that right? And you get accolades when you go over and abundant. Isn't that right? Oh, okay. Sometimes you may have to work overtime just in order to get the extra. Is that right? Oh, oh okay. Oh. Yeah, in this labor of love. Read. His master said unto him. What did he say? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, boy, my, Michael. Gabriel. Moses. Elijah. Look at him. Someone who gets it. This is a good and faithful servant. I tell you what, well done. What do you got to say? Read. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Over what? A few things. Come on. I will make thee a ruler over many things. Ooh. Boy, I sure love to hear them words. Hallelujah. Come on. Enter thou into the joy. Enter thou into what? Thy joy. To the joy of thy what? Thy master. Thy glory of the master. Glory? Glory? You mean to tell me for this little short period of life I'm here if I work out my salvation with fear and trembling? That I can enter into the glory of my master? Boy, he said that to me, boy, I'd have been walking down heaven road, going to lay down my halo. My Jesus said he'd walk along with me. Praise the Lord, glory, hallelujah. I'm singing all the way. I got sunshine in every day. So won't you come along and join me on that heaven road? That's what I'd have been doing. Glory to the king. You know all the hosts of heaven in there, right? All the hosts that haven't been there, I'll just say, hey, how you doing? I made it. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, how you doing? Yeah, good. I made it. Scoot over. Oh, hallelujah. Read on. He also that had received two talents uh -huh. came and said, Master. What did he say? Master? Thou delivered unto me two talents. You delivered to me two talents. You gave me two talents. Come on. Behold, I have gained two other talents. I gained them. two other talents. What? Beside them. Beside the ones you gave me. 
Come on. His master said unto him. What did he say? Well done, good and faithful servant. So, both of them received their penny. I'm banking on people who know the book says. You know what I mean? I know that sometimes we have a little, you know, fog in the mind and something like that, and it takes us a little time to catch up because we got chemtrails and GMOs and, and you know what I mean? Vaccines is messing up all these firing receptors and stuff. <laughs> oh, pity. Oh, yeah. I'm here. I'm here, I'm here Pastor. I'm here. Yeah, hallelujah. I understand the delayed reaction. That's why I always pause and wait. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Read on. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Uh huh. I will make thee ruler over many things. Come on. Enter thou into the joy of thy. Master. So he get the same reward. Of getting to enter into the glory and the joy of his master. See what I'm talking about? See, God wants you to be able to do according to the ability he's already given you. And then he wants you to even increase on that. That's why he says we need to go on to perfection. Oh, hallelujah. Read on. Then he which had received the one talent uh -oh. came and said, Lord, I knew this. Notice all of them calling the master. Every one of them, they know who he is. Oh, yeah. Read on. Master, I knew thee that thou art a hard man. You are what? A hard man. Hoo-wee. Guess what? The one with five knew he was a hard man, too. Meaning they, they knew that he was a man that meant business. This is a business transaction here. This is a business relationship. Uh-oh. Ain't that like the attitude of a lot of people? Oh, I can't do what I'm asked to do because uh, I don't want somebody else to get the glory. Y'all read the same scripture I read? Are you sure? He said, I knew you were a hard man. Hmm. Well, you should. He's just, he's fair, he's balanced, isn't he? Read on. Reaping where thou hast not sown. And oh, yeah, see, what you like doing is sitting on that throne, giving out of your abundance to people, and when they go out here and do all this labor, working their fingers to the bone, you want to benefit from their labors. You didn't, you, you, you didn't, so any of this, but you love reaping. See, you think because you're giving it, you're sowing. Well, that's the parable of the soul, right? The soul is the one who had the seed to put into the ground. <laughs> Isn't that right? Something wrong with expecting a yield? You hear the words of this cat, though. Read on. At gathering where thou hast not strewn. Isn't that something? You like gathering? You ain't never been out in that field hoeing. You didn't bring no cultivator or somebody out there to bring in the harvest. You see, in other words, there's more to words as what's being said. Words have an intent. You know a lot of times you say something without saying too much. There's the thought of perception. You can perceive what somebody's saying. Can you imagine here's the king sitting up here on the throne? And he's hearing this. Looking right at it. Look at all this stuff coming out of his mouth. You expect stuff like that to come out of people's mouth when they don't know who they serve. You know, when they really truly hadn't been a good working relationship. Mm -mm -mm. Read on. And, and I was afraid and even 
and went and, and laid thy talent in I was earth. afraid. Y'all is not giving us a spirit of what? He was so afraid, but he didn't fear the thing that he should have feared, which is Yah. So he took his talent and did what? Hid it in the earth. He buried it in the earth. Come on. There thou hast that is thine. His master answered and said unto him. In other words, I got what you gave to me. Here it is. This is a small... <laughs> <laughs> this is a smart, let me use this word, jackass of a man. Come on. Thou wicked and slothful servant. You wicked and what kind of servant? Slothful. And then y'all get mad at me for calling you lethargic, apathetic, complacent, using all these superlatives, which basically just says wicked. I mean, you might as well say, oh, I'm dressing it up some. King just came right out with it. You wicked and slothful what? Servant. Servant. I mean, I, after all, he's getting blasted up here in front of the whole kingdom by this non-producing, being dishonored, disrespected. See, if the one talent had a five talent spirit, he probably would have gave him five. So he didn't give him five because the damnation that he got for him and the judgment he got, he ain't got to go to that lower part. Oh, boy. Read on. <laughs> Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not. Isn't that something? But so did everybody else. I mean, after all, it's in his hand, it's his to do what he wants. Come on. And gather where I have not strewed. He's not denying none of the allegations. Read on. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanger. Ooh, put your money to the what? Exchanger. That's what you should have done. You should have knew where to, you know, what Donna says uh, uh, about the parable of the ten virgins. Five was wise and five were what? And then guess what? When it came time for the king to come, the foolish came to the wise and said what? Give me also. And what did the wise say? Uh-uh. Nope. Because if I give you my all, I ain't going to have enough. I need all the all in my lamp. Because it's that oil that keeps me burning. Oh, Hallelujah. Give me all in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me all in my lamp. I'll pray. I'll pray. Give me my lamb keep me burning yeah keep me burning to the break of day I need it all and I will sing Hosanna sing Hosanna sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. I will sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. See the reason why we need all? So we can sing. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You know, the, the Bible's just full of this. If it's it, it's just full of all these examples. How do you miss them? It's full of them. So I tell you what, you know where to go and buy. So go and buy. Isn't that right? That's what they said, right? And as they went, the king came. Uh-oh. In other words, don't waste your life being a fool. 
You better be wise. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Going back over to the talent, read, Brother Shane. And then at my coming, mm -hmm. I should have received my own with you. You hear that? He expecting to receive his own with some dividends. Hmm? He wants a profit here. Come on. Take therefore the talent from him. Take the talent from him. And remember, I'm sitting right there. I don't know what's getting ready to take place. Read on. And give it unto him which hath ten talents. Whoa! You know, I'm not, not, the price is right. <laughs> I'm coming up front again. Whoa, look at all these accolades. You go hug all the 12 tribes of Israel. You hug all the apostles. Hug the host of heaven. You don't hit jackpot. <laughs> and if the devil's standing there, go slap him before you go hug the king. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Glory to the king. <laughs> it is all right. Man, read on. For unto every one that hath shall be given. To every one that hath it shall be given. But. And he shall have abundance. He going to have what? Abundance. Read, look at that. Look at that. The father want to give you more. Even in the kingdom he want to give you more. So I don't mind all you people falling away. Keep on. <laughs> Fall on away. Huh? My number going to be called one day. Hallelujah. Read on. But from him that hath not. Uh-oh. Shall be taken away even that which he hath. Isn't that amazing? And cast ye that the unprofitable servant. The what kind of servant? Unprofitable. The unprofitable servant. The one that couldn't be a prophet to the kingdom. And I ain't talking about saying a bunch of lying words either. I'm talking about being a benefit in this labor. In this exile from y'all. Woo. And what else did he say? Into outer darkness. Uh-huh. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's what a one talent person going. Hallelujah. Well, I guess we answered the talents then, didn't we? Hmm. Glory to the king. Y'all all right? We already done preached. No, at least we preached today. And I ain't have to hem. Uh, somebody said, um, swing low. I need somebody to help me now. <laughs> man, how can I do this, man, with y'all up? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You can still get the anointing without all that talent. See, that's the wrong talent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hallelujah. All right. Okay. Last one. Man, these tour portions get long, though, don't they? Uh, okay, yeah, they wanted to know. About this. That Yah hates adult. I know he hates divorce. Divorce. You know, I, I'm amazed at people today. You can tell that people just regurgitate what other people say, right? Go to Matthew 19, Brother Shane. Start at verse 2. You can tell that they actually just repeat what somebody else says, and they really truly don't read the, the, the account for themselves. You know, right? 
Now, I'm going to read you Malachi 2.16, okay? It says, For Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. Y'all hear that? For one covered violence with his garment, saith Yahweh of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. And that treacherously meaning deceitfully, faithlessly to offend. You follow me? It's not talking about people who get offended outside of the scope of what this word says. It's talking about offending in this word right here. Is all right? Verse 2, read, Brother Shane. Come on. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees also came unto him. Here they come. Tempting him. What did they, they come in the spirit of what? Tempting. Tempting him. Read on. And saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Is it lawful? Call? For a man to put away his what? Wife. Wife. Read on. For every cause. For how many causes? Every For cause. every cause. Come on. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read? Have you not read? That he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. So the intention from the very beginning before sin entered into the world. In other words, the Messiah is saying a whole lot more than what our translation has given us. That's why I'm saying I speak to them that know the law, all right? It was not so. Read on. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, uh -huh. and shall cleave to his wife. Uh huh. And they twain. Then they do what? Flesh. They become what? One flesh. Read on. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. Read on. What therefore Yah hath joined together? What? Who hath joined together? Yah. How did y'all join this together? Just by setting the cosmos in order. A man for a woman. Not a man for man and a woman for woman. Come on. Let not man put asunder. Don't let anybody divide that. Read on. They say unto him. What did they say? Why didn't Moses then command to give thee a writing of divorce? Uh-huh. And to put her away. Ah, see, now what we're doing is we got trickster, lawyer type wordplay going on here. See, people in this society automatically interpret putting away with divorce. That's how they do it. But the Bible, especially from the scriptures, and you knew that, I mean, Christ gave them the word. There's a difference between divorce and putting away. And the questions that they asked was putting away. And then they try to play gymnastic, mental gymnastic, by saying that why did Moses then command them a writing of what? And then to do what? Put them away. Isn't that right? Two different things right here. See, Christ knows what's going on. Everybody else don't know what's going on. That's why it's good when you get an opportunity to get two preachers sitting in front of everybody because you get to hear the exact, the exactness of their heart. Is that right? Read on. He saith unto them. What did he say? Moses, because of the hardness of your heart. Moses, because of the hardness of your heart. Suffered you to put away your wives. Suffered you to put away your wives, which should be translated to divorce. Moses never suffered a man to put away his wife. See, we're dealing with pensmanship. We're dealing with trans. Relation now. Because in Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4, Moses penned and wrote the divorce decree. The sin is not the divorce. The sin is what taking place before the divorce. And the divorce is a result of the sin which protects the victim. This day the axe laid to the root of the tree. We laying it out now, ain't we? So everybody can steal our words. I hope y'all learning so y'all can teach somebody else. Hallelujah. Read on. But from the beginning it was not so. From the beginning, from the beginning, from the beginning, before seeing it into the world, you wouldn't need a divorce decree.
Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Read on. And I say unto you. And I say unto you, the same one who wrote the Torah, the instructions, the same one that says before Abraham was, I am. Come on. The same one that said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the Amen. Read on. Whosoever shall divorce his wife. Whosoever shall do what with his wife? Divorce. Divorce his wife. Except it be for fornication. Except it be. For fornication. See, in the Hebrew, that word fornication means is zanah. Zanah. All right? What is fornication? Fornication is not a man going out and having sex with an unmarried woman. That's Western theology. Uh-oh. I speak to them that know the law. Laikla, the 18th chapter, Leviticus 18, tells you what fornication is. It gives you a whole list of stuff that is fornication, that is uncleanliness. So this, if we're going to put it in perspective the way that it should be interpreted according to the scripture that cannot be broken, we have to interpret in that light, in that light alone. And not according to these people trying to confuse us with pensmanship and translation. In other words, you can't have your father's wife. Everybody says, oh man, that's common sense. Yeah, it's common sense when that woman is your mother. But if she's not your mother, now you see the reason why it's written. We seen the same thing happen over in the first Corinthians when Paul went ahead and laid them out, didn't he? He said, man, you people got up here and didn't even mourn. This man is up here having sex with his father's wife and you people didn't even mourn. Boy, after they got that understanding, they, they was like, man, we're going to put this book out of hand and put he getting out of here. And then he had to come back in the second chapter and write it, write the wrong that he had done. Because they were coming in as hard judges, boy, after they understood it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a mankind should not lie with mankind as with woman. Fornication. You, you should not have any sex with animals. A woman shouldn't lie with a woman. You should not have sex with a woman during her monthly cleansing. See, it's all in there. But if you interpret according to this Western Christian theology, you're going to be confused. You ain't going to know what's even trying to be said. That's why you have to know what the law says. Read that verse again. And I say unto you, uh -huh. whosoever shall divorce his wife, mm -hmm. except it be for fornication. Except it be that this woman has actually done something that would fit the laws of uncleanliness. And one thing is not written in that law of uncleanliness, but it's written in another place is this rebellion. Which is as the sin of witchcraft, and we ought not to suffer a witch to live. See, it changed. Oh, never mind. It, it changed. Mm. Read. And shall marry another. And then if he marries another, come on. Committeth adultery. He committed adultery. Now the only way he could commit adultery is if this woman did what? Committed fornication. Say it again. Committed fornication. If she committed fornication. Because the ideal is, is you don't put away a wife in Israel just so you can get another wife. You keep the wife you've got and you bring the other one in the house with you and now you got two. Because that's what the book says. If a man have two wives, Deuteronomy 21, 15. If a man has two wives, one beloved and one hated, 
If he brings in another, Exodus 21, 10, her food, her raiment shall not be diminished. Her conjugal rights shall not be diminished. You got to know the law. You start off looking at the law wrong, you're going to be wrong all the way across the book. All you're going to be is a religious relic. That's all you're going to be. Read on. And whosoever marries her. And then if somebody married this woman that was what? Put away for what? Fornication. Notice she's not divorced because a divorce is a complete release. It terminates the contract. And the whole idea of divorce was to give her a letter so that you wouldn't put out her name amongst Israel in a slanderous way where nobody will want her and then we got a bunch of refugees running around Israel. Well, how do you know that? We can follow the example of yourself with Miriam. When there was found in her a child that was filled by the Holy Spirit, he was a good man and a just man, and he was minded to put her away privately, unlike you jack leg and boot leg and sorry jackasses that want to go make a spectacle of every time a woman makes a mistake. And let me remind you, as you judge, so shall you be judged. And whatever you meet, it'll be meet back to you again. I speak to them that know the law. Mm -mm -mm. Now, if she's put away without a bill of divorce and someone go into it, then it's fornication. Now, we got people who think they're wise today. What they'll do is, is they, they'll put away a wife and then they don't want her to have a bill of divorce so they can hold her in escrow. But you've already terminated the contract according to Exodus 21 10 by abandonment. By not providing all those things that were needful for her. That's the reason why that she would have the judges to go to the elders of the land. And what this boot liquor wouldn't do the thing that is right, they would do right by her. Boy, they in trouble now, ain't they? getting hot in the end. <laughs> Read on. And whoso marries her, we just put away, doth commit adultery. And how do you marry her? You go out and get a state's marriage license? You have sex with her. That consummated the agreement. Read on. His disciples say unto him. His disciples said unto him. If the case of the man be so with his wife, mm -hmm. it is not good to marry. No, it ain't good for you to marry if you're going to have a boot licking mindset. If you're a jack leg. If you're a dog. If you do it right, then marriage is honorable. In all things in the bed undefiled. Whosoever find a wife, finds a good thing and obtain favor with y'all. We can go on all day long. <laughs> anyway, that's enough for talk, boys. We don't have enough. Finish up, brother, saying. But he said unto them. I feel that people may have a heart attack out there after hearing all this law. This good, pure, just, true law. Mm -hmm. Read on. But he, but he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying. They can't. Look at America. Look at them. They showed up. They might see the problem again in his whole passage is a man putting away his wife unlawfully and marrying another. See, when you have a monolingual mindset, that's the way you think and proceed. That's why you're all jacked up, and then when you get there to the kingdom and y'all start judging you for adultery, then now you really going to know why. Well, I didn't know. You're going to start blaming the preacher. Yeah, but I told you to study, to show yourself approved unto y'all. A workman that needed not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You had the example of the Bereans. 
Oh, I remember that day you clicked on a YouTube video and you seen that pop-eyed preacher pastor die hollering and screaming and you said, I don't like him. You heard what he had to say, but you rejected it. And guess who sent him? I did. In other words, ain't no wiggle room. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. It's going to be over. Ain't going to be no wiggle room. <laughs> you got to understand, when I hear this word, I, mean, I just get it word like fire shut up in my bone, boy. Huh? I'm, I just love y'all's law. Great peace have they which love thy law, mm. and nothing shall offend them. Mm. Woo-wee. Mm-mm-mm. I like that shalom. Huh? Mm. You see, I start preaching a lot. People get offended. They go, they get me. They, they, man, they be spawning. I'm like, man, how can you kick against this good, pure word? That, man, somebody got to be antichrist. Somebody got to be antichrist. So glad it ain't me. So Yahweh hate the putting away. He don't hate divorce. If he hated divorce, then he never got divorced. Oh. Oh. Did he not give Israel a divorce? And did he not warn that whore as treacherous Judah? If you don't get your act together, I'm gonna give you one too. <laughs> All right, we're gonna tap out for him. <laughs> <clears throat> We're going to tap out for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's, when, that, that's like when Ali knocked out Sonny Liston the second time. Sonny Liston told me he was going to eat him up. And Ali, man, he, he put it on him. Came back for a rematch, boy, and my, my, my. The, the first time he just... Spit out the mouthpiece. Second time, pow, he just stayed down. <laughs> see, if you're religious, you just hated everything I just said. Now you see the spirit of the scribes and Pharisees. Because y'all's people be rejoicing at the truth. Oh, hallelujah. Finish, did you finish, bro? Saying, go ahead and finish, man. Oh, man, can I receive this saying? No. Save they to whom it is given. See, it's been given to me. Some of you people have been churching all your life, ain't never heard this before. Y'all give it to you just so you can know. Just so that you do not be destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Ain't y'all good. Beautiful, isn't it? We moving on. This is the word of life. Why? Because it came out of y'all's mouth. He said in Psalms 89 that I'm not going to alter or change anything that's gone out of my lips. You get that? We still fighting this system today. But the system is not looking like this. It's the system that is entrenched right here. That's why I take get your people out, get your children out of public school. You love them, get them out. Because they're learning this system. Today, we're going to talk about vengeance. Is mine, I will repay. We're going to get an understanding of the word vengeance. Because you know, this system, along with its churches, has prescribed in our mind what vengeance is and what it should and shouldn't be. There's always the element of worship in the enforcement of the law of y'all. Y'all understand that, right? In other words, whenever you can adjudicate a matter, be it among brethren, or if you're in a position to where you are sitting amongst the elders of the land, you have to adjudicate matters, or if people in the assembly, they have to come to you as a leader. Either way it goes, 
you give them the answer, it's actually a form of worship, who you serve. Because remember, we're charged not to speak our own words. We're charged to give them what Yah says. See, that's why the potential of accepting a bribe, a bribe doesn't necessarily have to be something under the table. It could be your favorite person that you don't speak the truth to. Because over here, you have envy against the same person that they have. Oh, yeah, we're going to hit all these little things. Yeah, to make sure ain't nobody getting by. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. So we have to adjudicate these matters righteously. Is that right? It's a form of worship. Because it's about who you serve. Vengeance. To sin against Yah, men usually must sin against something in the creation. People, when listening to me, sometimes are repulsed by my words. But the truth is, they're not repulsed by me. They're repulsed by words that have not been rehearsed in their ears. Because why are people destroyed? A lack of knowledge. And not because knowledge is not available. You reject the knowledge that is available. And when you reject knowledge, Yah said, I will also reject you from being my people. Are we to assume as a people who has the perfect instructions of Yah that when one, that when a brother wrongs us, we are, our only recourse is the civil magistrates in this world. Is that what we are, is that what we're supposed to assume? The bizarre behavior we usually face in ministry is when someone transgresses Yah's law. Those being judged rejected the counsel of the elders. They do not receive the judgments. This is the attitude of people. As a result, they kick the traces. They run back to the world to the so-called to so-called avoid the judgment of Yah, which they considered the judgment of man. Because we did not judge in their favor. So without knowledge, they run to social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. They rebel and go to their appeals court, the court of public opinion, who do not know all the facts of the case like we do. And what we quickly learn is that these type of people only serve themselves. And have never really been true servants. When judgment does not fall in their favor, they stop being Israelites and go to the unjust world. I should have put T O O, but forgive me. I mean, after I was I was educated in the public food system. All right. First Corinthians six one says, "Dare any of you having a matter against another to go? I mean, to go to law before the what? Before the who?" And not before the who. So if we claiming to be Israel, even if you claiming out there to be Christians and you following this Bible, you ain't supposed to be going to the world for judgment that's supposed to be taking place in the house of Yah. That is an unjust world. You're supposed to be going towards the saints. All right now. See, we love running. We're going to call the police. You're so stupid, you don't know it. All you're going to do is open your pocketbook every time you call. That ain't no free trip. You get out there and get it from that court, you're going to pay for all them complaints. Man, how dumb can you be? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest of matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? And if then ye have judgment that pertaineth to things of this life, set them to judge who are the least esteemed in the assembly. I've even done that before. We've had judgments and stuff, and I'll bring someone that people would 
consider at least 16, someone brand new that don't know nothing, they come on in to hear the matter and say, I agree exactly what y'all say. Right spirit. Everyone that has come to this ministry, they all have said, I'm a wise man. Every one of them has said it. What you really mean is, I am a wise man when I'm judging everybody else. When it comes to you, my wisdom stops. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one. That shall be able to judge between his brethren? But brother go to law with brother and that before the unbelievers? Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you because you go to the law with one another. Why do you not rather take the wrong? Oh, because I'm too prideful and my dignity got hurt and I feel insulted and I'm offended. Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covers, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Yah. So we run to the social, civil, judicial system for what we call justice. How do you get justice from an unjust system? Government by its very definition is evil. And these are the supreme judges. Well, we got to Knock him out. He died suddenly all of a sudden. And if they don't straighten up, they can die suddenly too. So rather than, you know, going, that we go to these legalized extortionists, suited and booted against all unrighteousness. Every one of those judges out there in the world that wear these black capes, black robes and stuff. Legalized extortioners. Can't come to these judges, though. Nah, don't like these judges. Uh-uh. Isaiah 63, 4 says, For the day of vengeance is mine, is in my heart. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. In other words, can you imagine that y'all just waiting on this? And the year of my redeemed is come. Romans 12, 19 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, save Yahweh. So you think that this means that everybody is, it can perpetuate all kind of evils against you, and you should just say, Kumbaya, my love, Kumbaya. Boy, they did me evil, pray for them. We're going to give you some understanding. The scripture provide case law against any infractions, be they civil, familial, meaning family, or ecclesiastical. In the instructions, the victim must represent Yah by becoming a plaintiff against the sinner. In some cases, restitution is made to the victim, and in other cases, it's made to Yah. The Bible provides five remedies for criminal behavior. Number one, flogging. Deuteronomy 25, verse 3. And this is just not in no particular order, so don't be legalistic and dogmatic against me, okay? Number two, the cutting off of a woman's hand. Deuteronomy 25, verse 12. Number three, economic restitution. Deuteronomy 22, 29 and Exodus 21, I mean 22, 1. And, and believe me, these are just a few scriptures because there's plenty of cases in the instructions that says you need to be paying some restitution whenever you do someone wrong. This is called a payment, meaning 
a payment for vengeance. Slavery. Exodus 21, 6. Boy, America got a lot to pay on that one, don't it? And the Arabs do too. Mm-mm. Number five, death. You know, there's a bunch of death laws. You know dishonoring your father and mother, the penalty was death? You know that committing adultery, the penalty is death? There are a bunch of laws that constitute death. See, you have that which is natural, then you have that which is spiritual. And don't think because if you go out there and you transgress Yah's law natural, Naturally, you say a few things. You got to be worried about your spirit being dead. See, we never take that into account while all of a sudden we become so distant from Yah when we transgress. Where it seems like he's just so far away from us when we transgress. Y'all hearing this? What were the purpose and the goals of these laws among our people? Before we go over them, let's see what Yahweh says about them. Deuteronomy 4.1, it's supposed to say Yahweh right there, all right? And now, Israel, listen, we're coming from the Scriptures version, all right? To the laws and the right rulings which I am teaching you to do, so that you live and shall go in and possess the land which Yahweh, Elohim of your father, has given you. Do not add to the word which I command you, and do not take away from it, so as to guard the commandments of Yahweh, your Elohim, which I am commanding you. Your eyes have seen what Yahweh did at Baal Peor. Baal Peor, for Yahweh, your Elohim, has destroyed from your midst all the men who did what? Follow Baal Peor. You see what Yah is doing? See, notice when people, they get offended and they go away. What happens is, is that Yah is destroying these people from the midst of the holy. So don't think when people, they, they go away, they go right back off into the world and, and, and you, you start feeling sorry for them. You're going to be able to partake of these people's sins. I just got finished uh, blasting Melissa Half Acre on uh, Facebook. I'm like, what is this? Let me see, you fall away, the first thing you do is you put a facial up there, all this makeup on. You don't put the full body picture up there. And you're so proud, that's the first thing you do. You, you snatch off the head covering, probably never did war dresses, and then all of a sudden there's something wrong with me when I told you if you lived holy, if you lived a life, a conviction that would have caused that man to fear Yah, then you probably could have warned your husband Yah, but if you live in a half-assed life, don't expect no man to be convicted. You don't, he see that you don't even believe what you, what you did. You don't even believe what you live in. Then he turn around and says to me, well, I know that you, you don't have to judge me and everything. I'm dead, I'm dead. I, I, I didn't even reply. Where's my honor? Why, why all of a sudden I'm wrong now? Same thing that everybody does, they fall away. They go put back on the Gentile garment. Twice dead, plucked up by the root. Somebody got to be twice dead and plucked up by the root. I'm sorry if it's your friend and you getting offended and I'm talking about it to hell with you too. How about that? When's somebody going to love righteousness? When's somebody going to be for Yahweh? So Yahweh was reminding the Israelites, you seen what I did over at Baal Peor. For Yah your Elohim destroyed from your midst all the men who followed Baal Peor. Is that right? But you who are clinging to Yahweh. See what I mean? Have we turned to the left? Have we turned to the right? Have we stopped following him? Or are we still clinging to him? Now you go to your Facebook and all your social media and see if all those people are clinging to Yahweh. You can, it's, it's clear to see. So Yahweh said, but you who are clinging to your Elohim are alive today, every one of you. See, people were dying physical deaths then, but see now they're dying spiritual deaths. It's like they ain't never had the Holy Spirit. They're still living, and that's the deception. They're still breathing, living. they think that they're still spiritually alive. 
Hmm? See, I have taught you laws and right rulings as Yahweh my Elohim commanded me to do thus in the land which you go to possess. And you shall guard and do them. What shall you do, Israel, whenever you go to any land? Guard to do what? Do y'all's laws, is that right? For this is your wisdom, Israel, and your understanding before all, before the eyes of the people who hear all these laws. You know the main reason why these people up in this town are afraid of us? Because we keep the commandments. You can make up all the noise and everything else you want. The bottom line is, is that just by our very presence, we condemn them. You don't have to say nothing. When you're living right, everybody else is guilty. If they really truly want to know what right was and if they believed they was right, don't the Bible tell us to earnestly to contend for the faith? Don't it tell us to debate our cause? That's the instructions. But these people don't want to talk. Isn't that right? And they shall say, only a wise and understanding people is this great nation. When we carry around this thing right here, everybody out there know when we obey in y'all's word, we are a wise and understanding people. Some of them wish that they could do it, but they can't do it because they have a God of family. They care more about what their family says than what y'all say. They love their natural family more than the, the ones that's going to be with them in the kingdom. Hmm? For what great nation is there which has Elohim so near it as Yahweh? Our Elohim is to us whenever we call on him. And what great nation is there that has such laws and right rulings, righteous right rulings, like all this instruction which I set before you this day? See what y'all is calling us? A great nation, a righteous nation that's full of right rulings and live righteously and, and just, just extinct amongst the most high. Oh, we're despised amongst the world, but hey, if you, you, hey, if you took an attitude and take an attitude of your pastor, you, you know what I say about the world, right? I wouldn't even give them the pleasure to kiss it either. See, that's saying something without saying anything. Go figure it out. Double ring 49. Only look, Israel, guard yourselves. Y'all hear that, Israel? These holy right instructions, these, 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 this righteous law is telling us, you guard yourselves and guard your life diligently, lest you forget the words your eyes have seen, and lest they turn aside from your heart all the days of your life, and you shall make them known to your children and your grandchildren. The day when you stood before Yahweh, your Elohim, in horror. And Yahweh said to me, assemble the people to me. And I make them to hear my words so that they learn to fear me all the days they live on the what? Earth and teach them to their children. You think anybody falling away from this is teaching anything to their children? They teaching them how to whore. They teach them how to look like a bunch of Jezebels. They teaching these men how to be a bunch of sissies. Much of pancake pork chop sissies. Oh, hallelujah. Number one, uphold Yah's interest by enforcing his law civil. Y'all get it? Number two, penalizing wicked criminal behavior by sometimes removing the criminal from the world. They will just take vengeance and kill the person. Number three, warning all people of the eternal judgment to come, meaning ministry and evangelism. Let them know that the king is coming. You better get your heart right. Protecting the civil order, meaning you give a deterrence. If you do this, then hey, this is what's going to happen. So you better go ahead and walk this way. 
protecting the interests of victims, meaning justice. You can't shut up and because someone's a victim and, 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 and they don't have, they're not great in power and might. You can't take a bribe and judge for the one that has the power. You got to judge righteously. Every bit of this has to do with upholding Yah's law. Every bit of it does. What if I told you you should be rejoicing in Yah's vengeance upon these wicked people and nations? How would you respond? Kind of hard to respond since your family, some of them. Well, Pastor, you didn't have to say that, man. Come on. Sorry, your mom and dad are going to burn too. They don't get this law right. They're going to burn. Yep, your, your son, your daughter, your me, ma, pa, pa, he, ha. No, no, they're all going to burn if they don't get with this program. Now have the audacity and get mad at him. You can join them. You can all be in the same place. Uh-oh. Look what it says in the law. Deuteronomy 20, 32, 43. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people. See, mixed multitude of people that came out of Egypt, they were there to rejoice, and they were counted as Yah's people as well. For he will avenge the blood of his servants. And will render vengeance to his adversaries. And will be merciful unto his land and to his people. You know, every time I read this, I often think. Can you imagine those people? The, uh, all those who judge, those scribes and Pharisees, the Messiah. I, I go to the extreme, right? And then those soldiers that decided they was going to uh, put a crown of thorns on his head. And spit and mock him and slap him and stuff and he just letting them get on by. Remember, because he said, if I want to, at any time, I could call a legion of angels. Can you imagine that one day all these mockers and all these scoffers are going to stand? I got some news for you, too. Not only is he going to get these nations and these rebellious people in it that has done that to him, he going to get them that done that to you too. Because he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. See, in other words, there's also a day of vengeance that is appointed to the world. Ain't nobody going to get by. The people that are in the graves is going to be like they just Went to sleep, pop, woke up. If you believe all this dead theology junk, there's a bunch of stuff out there. That's amazing. The Messiah could go down to hell, take the keys, slap the devil around about three, four days, and then have the people that, that were in the graves, he keeps using the graves, which is what? She old hell, right? Raise them up, and then they can walk around on this earth after his resurrection. Then he tells you he got the keys of death and hell. Ah, oh, never mind. Anyway, Deuteronomy 32, 35. To me belongeth what? Oh, oh. And recompense. See, what we think is that vengeance exclusively belongs to him. This is what we got to have right theology. And recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. What? Well, notice. In due time. Let me go ahead and, and interpret. The wicked, their foot is going to slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. He says in the scriptures version of this, verse 40, For I lift my hand to the heavens, and shall say as I live forever, if I have sharpened, my flashing sword, and my hand takes hold on judgment, I shall return vengeance to my enemies and repay those who hate me. Y'all get this so far? Brother Saint, get Luke 168. See, we're going we're gonna to break something down here just for a second and get on back to his 
You see, because we have having a hard time figuring out who our enemies are. See, the whole idea of Rome is, is to make everybody Romans. And if everybody's Romans, then nobody's your enemy, including the enemy that is your enemy. So if everybody's Americans, then nobody's your enemy, including the enemy that's your enemy. I just got finished looking at a video this morning. Remember, how many times I, I tell us, I know people are not going to comply because everybody don't hear my voice. Only those to who y'all will. I tell people, get their children out of public school. See, now, when something goes on pertaining to a particular color of people's skin, the news media just don't flash that out there no more because it, it causes too much rage. You follow me? So, there was a seven-year-old boy that was being naughty in class. And the teacher was taking him to the office. Well, by the time he got to the office, he had a broken jaw. 25-year-old man broke this seven-year-old boy's jaw. Y'all hear that? So that's a good thing. I don't have no children in public school like that. Because there ain't going to be nothing out there that's going to protect them. I prom See, y'all think I'll just be talking. I, I promise you, my lifestyle, there's nothing in my past that proves that I just talk. If I say it, boy, it's happening. The best thing they could do is, is get, lock him up to, to protect him from me. And that's what this system does. It protects the wicked. Because your grown ass would have hit my son. I don't give a damn what the United States of America say in the state of Tennessee. They better protect you by locking you up because the day you get out, and if you ever get out, I will be paying attention. Somebody said, well, you ain't, you're supposed to forgive. Yeah, my brothers. Yeah, yeah, my brothers. Yeah, yeah, all my brothers. Yeah, we're not supposed to have any ill will amongst us. Yeah, when it says uh, forgive your enemy, that means the brother has made you his enemy. You forgive give him. It's if a brother sins against you. It's half the world. The world ain't my damn brother. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I got some splinters from a Louisville baseball bat for you. Wrong interpretation. How do we know this? Luke 1, 68. Start at verse 68. Blessed be Yahweh Elohim of Israel. All right, blessed be Yahweh Elohim of who? Israel. That's your Yah. That's my Yah. Blessed be Yahweh Elohim of Israel. Read. For he has visited and redeemed his people. For he has visited and redeemed his what? People. People. Come on. And hath raised up a horn of salvation. He's raised up a horn of salvation. Come on. For us. For who? Us. His people Israel. Yes. Read. In the house of his servant David. Come on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Come on. Which have been since the world began. Mm-hmm. That we. That we, meaning we, Israel, are going to be what? Saved from our enemies. From our who? Our enemies. From our enemies and? From the hand of all that hate us. There's a lot of people that hate us. Yes. And many of them hate us without a cause. We ain't done nothing to them, but we're going to be saved from our enemies and all them that hate us. And I'm sorry, everybody in America is not your kissing cousin and your friend. That's why you hear me over and over again saying in these videos, these people up here have made it quite known that I'm not accepted, and I am not their friend, and I am not trying to be their friend either. I'm glad to know who my enemy is. And why they get mad at me? I just tell them I'm going to be the best enemy you ever had. Y'all say they're going to save us from our enemies and all them that do what? Hate us. Read. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Come on. And to remember his holy covenant. You hear that? He's going to remember his holy covenant, everything he's ever said. Read on. The oath which he swore he, to our fathers. Because remember, and guess, guess what? And he swore to the fathers because he couldn't swear nobody greater than himself. I'm going to make a promise to myself because I know I can be trusted. 
Read on. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham mm -hmm. that he would grant unto us. Grant unto us, Israel, us, Israel, us, Israel, that. That we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Isn't that something? Because when he delivers us out of our hands of our enemy, and he got many ways of that deliverance too. Also that we can serve him without fear. Yeah, beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. Hallelujah. So you hear that Baptist? You ain't my brother. You don't keep the commandments. Uh-oh. Oh, hallelujah. So he says, if I have sharpened my flashing sword and my hand takes hold on judgment, I shall return vengeance to my enemies and those who hate me. I make my arrows drunk with blood. You hear that? He's going to have a vesture. His vesture is, is all white. By the time when he gets finished with it, it's going to be all blood, all red. And he said he's going to bathe himself in it. In other words, Yahweh is going to rejoice. And he's going to take pleasure in the destruction of the wicked. I know y'all find it hard to believe because, you know. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Let me go ahead and bust your apple cart up. If you wicked, he hates your children. You haven't repented of your sins and keep his commandments. Your children are going to burn in the same place you're going to burn in. Somebody tell it like it is. How are you going to sit up there and call this woman a dog, but all of a sudden you're a perfume pig? And he done cleaned you up. You better wake up out of this fairy tale and land of make believe, Mr. Rogers Land. And my sword devoured flesh with the blood of the slain of the captives, and from the look at this long haired enemy chiefs. O nations acclaimed his people, for he avenges the blood of his servants and returns vengeance. To his adversaries and his pardon and shall pardon his land, his people. Now look at what Yahweh did to Egypt. Have y'all seen Egypt? It's a desolate place, isn't it? Look what he did to Babylon. Look what he did to Assyria. Where is ancient Greece? All you see is ruins. No, you see a people that's occupied a little territory and call themselves Greeks. <laughs> they ain't the prominence of the world. Egypt is no longer flashy and shiny. Why? Y'all call this thing. And what he did to Egypt, he's doing, he's going to do to America. Egypt at one time was the glory of the world. Yezekiel 32.15 says, when I shall make the land of Egypt desolate and the country shall be destitute of that whereof it was full. And when I shall smite all them that dwell therein, then shall they know that I am Yahweh. <laughs> See, we forget what Egypt did to his people, but y'all don't forget we have short-term memory. He has a long-term memory. He told them boogers just when they thought they was going to get away that they're going to be fine. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Y'all, I got your number. He got them. And who can say that he didn't pay that? Used to be the wonder of the world. 
sand and beetles and dust mites. Look at it. All beaten up and weathered and all it is is a tourist attraction now. Huh? Just a tourist attraction. No more glory. Only death. Just Egypt. Look at them, man. It used to be the glory. Raiding touch tomb. Just, I mean, can you imagine that they used to be the greatest empire? At one time, y'all said, oh, I got something for you. Now people go and pay money to look at the paintings on the wall. To see the obelisks, to see all the statues and, and everything else of Egypt and the glory of it. Guess what, America? You next. And that's all because of the way that Egypt treated its people. Look at all them slaves on the wall. You don't see them Egyptians out there in that field. Them Hebrews. See the Afro? See Afro Thunder. Look at it. Look at the Sphinx now. They used to sit there and guard all of him. Look at that thing. The book was weathered. Napoleon blew the nose off of it. <laughs> y'all, when y'all finishes something, man, he finishes. Huh? Look, people just on camels now, just looking at it. Don't even know what memory to put in their head. In Joel 3:19, Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the vi- for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. If y'all did this to Egypt, America, you damn so getting ready to judge. You ain't getting past this. See, this is y'all's vengeance. White House, you next, outhouse. It's gonna be burned by fire. Why? For what you did to y'all's people in this land. The indigenous Amer- uh, uh, Indians and then bringing people over here by ships. You know, you could have had slavery if you did it the Bible way. The Bible ain't told you to beat the hell out of somebody until the blood come out of them. Even in our law, we got if we're going to be the Hebrew servant, we beat them 49 stripes, save one. Mm. Chains and burns. Everybody's showing up for the barbecue. Hanging folks. I never did understand slavery, man, in this country. Let me see. We got bought over here against our will, stolen from our land, bought over here, made to work in the fields, but we're the cause of every problem in America. I still don't get that. How are we the cause of every damn thing in America? It don't make sense. Huh? Y'all remember that Emmett Till? Y'all seen his face? Y'all see his face in his coffin. That's all because he looked at a white woman. His mama said, no, I want this this casket open for everybody to see. Look at that. See, everybody going to barbecue, look, hey. Here's a picture right here of one of the cartoon slave um, Hired slave master. Checking out Israelite sister. Putting a foot on the back of the slave. Hmm. Getting drunk. Attempting to rape her. Her man comes along. Brings justice. The mistake he made was by not killing his ass. Because if you're going to get hanged, you might as well take him with you. And now she's pleading for him, which ain't gonna, they ain't going to be no, they will show no mercy. And now he's going to be hung, and he's going to go back to raping her. That's the truth. So when Paul was speaking about vengeance, he had in mind something totally different than today. For instance, Romans 12, 19 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Here it is. For it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, say of y'all. Now let's look up the word wrath. 
Greek 3709, wrath. In other words, give place to anger, a natural disposition, in other words, a temper. Remember the word that says, be ye angry, but what? Sin not, character or movement and agitation of the soul. Hear that? An impulse or a desire. Any violent emotion. See, all this has to do with how you feel. Then it goes all the way down and starting to water down anger, anger, wrath, indignation, anger exhibited in punishment. It's clear Yahweh intervenes personally in history. We saw it with Egypt. He did it in Egypt and he would do it in America for the crimes against his people. It is highly inaccurate to say Yahweh only has the authority to impose vengeance. Yahweh has set an order up as well to deal with sins, transgressions, problems, and offenses in Israel. Since we are in slavery in our enemy's land, we do not have the civil authority to impose the death penalty or other physical punishments because we're in captivity. Vengeance is a form of restitution. It's payback for what is owed to the sinner. Not one person is ever going to escape Yahweh's vengeance. The day of repayment will come. Now, let's go to the scriptures version. And let's read to Helium 73. And I need you to listen real good. Are y'all ready? Elohim is truly good to Israel. To those whose heart is clean. To whose heart is what? But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. Listen to what David says. My step had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boasters when I saw of the peace of the wrongdoers. In other words, when you see the the wrongdoers in this world, it seems like they can just do wrong and just be in total peace and nothing ever happens to them and the wicked just keep flourishing and don't it? For death has no pains for them. It seems like they go down in a grave at an old age in peace. Look at Ronald Reagan, that wicked ass president, that child pedophile. Look what he says. And death has no pains for them, and their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, and they are not plagued like other men. So pride is their necklace. Look at Donald Trump. The garment of violence covers them. Their eyes bulge from fatness. Their heart overflows with imaginations. They mock and speak evil in the evil of oppression. They speak lofty. They set their mouths against the heavens. And their tongue walks through the earth saying, Therefore his people returned here. And waters are of a filled cup and drained by them. And they have said, How could El know? In other words, all these things that we do to these people, how can he know? There is, and is there knowledge of the Most High? Come on, man, look at us. Don't nobody know God. See, these are wrongs and always at ease. They have amassed wealth. Indeed, in vain have I cleansed my heart. So David is saying, man, I'm living on this earth. I know that the wealth of the wicked is supposed to be stored up for the righteous, but all I see is the prosperity of the unjust fools. The wicked are prospering. They are flourishing at every end. And, and this is David saying this. He says, what, what is the purpose of me cleansing my heart from all filthiness and wickedness? I'm looking at the reward that these people are getting here. Man, they, they got it all going on in this world. And wash my hands in innocence. For I am plagued all day long. And my reproof is every morning. If I had said, let me speak thus. See, I would have deceived a generation of your children. Yet when I tried to understand this, it was labor to my eyes. Until I went into the set apart place of hell. 
Then I perceive their end. Indeed, you set them in slippery places. You make them fall to ruins. How suddenly are they ruined? Completely swept away through destruction. Yahweh, when you wake, you despise their image. In other words, ah, he's letting them fill up their cup. He's letting them think that they're getting by. He's even got there believing that there's no Elohim. These wicked believe there'll never be a judgment. That this earth is just here for our pleasure and for us to take advantage of every single body when we can. Why? Because nothing is going to happen to us. But David said, ah. Oh. But when I went into the set apart place, I went into the temple and I began to pray and read and understand the instructions. Then I see what's going on with these people. As one does a dream after walking. For my heart was in a firmament, and I was pierced in my kidneys. I was stupid and ignorant. I was like a beast toward you because I thought you was unfair, y'all. We're supposed to be your people, and I'm looking at the prosperity of these fools and stuff, and when I went in to, to hear your instructions, now I realize how stupid I am. I realize how brutish I am. I was like one of these beasts in the field. My understanding was nothing. What trash I had in my mind. This is what King David is saying, Israel. Yet I am always with you. You took hold of my right hand. You lead me by your counsel. And afterwards receive me unto the extinct. Whom do I have in the heavens? And I have desired no one besides you on earth. This is what David says. You have been everything, my source, my shield, my buckler, my high tower, my sufficient, my all in all and everything that I need. My flesh and my heart shall waste away, but Elohim is the rock of my heart and my portion forever. For look, those who are far from you perish. You shall cut off all those who go a whoring away from you. But as for me, it is good to be near Elohim. I have made my refuge in the master Yahweh to declare all your works. See, David understood there's an end coming to the wicked. They're receiving their portion right now. And in that, he even got reproved in himself. In other words, Israel, this life you live in is not in vain. Yeah, you get up trouble on every side in the morning. It's reproved by the wickedness that you comprehend and see. And you have a desire to be clean. I mean, because we all pray, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. We do this even after obtaining salvation, having our name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We're still oppressing. And we look out and see the wicked, no trouble come to them, but trouble don't last always, as the old people used to say. Hmm? Yahweh's system of sanction applies to the whole world. And not just the Israelites. Deuteronomy 28 is a natural law as well as a spiritual law. Everybody experiences this because we are the ones that was charged to teach the nations. Just because we're not in a position of power to teach them don't mean that, that the word is void. Look at all the diseases that are still here on this earth. Hmm? And the affliction that we have is like many are the affliction of the righteous. But y'all deliver us out of them all. Every single one of us, he never leaves us, he don't forsake us. Every affliction is just to bring us to more perfection. Hallelujah. Make us more set apart. After we figure out how many fools we've been, it is the goodness of Yah that leads thee to repent. 
And that's why we can say Yah is good all the time and all the time Yah is good. Hallelujah. 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 Payment is always required. Offended people believe they do not have to pay. So they run from righteousness. Shemot 22.1 says, When a man steals an ox or sheep and shall slaughter it or sell it, he repays five cattle for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. Look at that. You hear that in Israel? That's vengeance and the payment for it. If a thief is found breaking in and he is smitten so that he dies, there is no guilt for his blood. You know what that is? Vengeance for the transgressor. Vengeance for the one that trespasses. You will not be condemned, not by Yah, for protecting your home. Christianity ain't going to tell you this. They'll tell you to invite the thief in and cook him a steak dinner. Sit down and try to evangelize him. I'm going to evangelize you with a 40, a Glock 40. And I'm going to hit you with pow, pow, pow. That's the only ministry you're getting from me. Somebody said, oh, you know, it's going to be on your conscience. Now, hold on now. I'm a soldier now, all right? I'm a soldier. I played Call of Duty before. <laughs> I got many badges. I never feel any remorse when I wake up in the morning. As a matter of fact, I'm going to look waiting. I, I go over to sleep and wake up and ready to get some. That's my pastor. <laughs> you know, it's hard trying to preach a message with y'all laughing all over the time. It, it's, it's tough, man. <laughs> That's vengeance and payment for it. If the sun has risen on him, there is guilt for his bloodshed. He shall certainly repay if he has, look at this, if he has not the means. Then he shall be sold for his what? Theft. That's vengeance. If the thief is indeed found alive in his hand, meaning you shoot the shit out of him and he's still living, whether it is an ox or a donkey or sheep, he repays what? Double. And the only reason why he should still be alive is because you forgot to put 15 rounds in your clip. That's right. That's right. Leviticus 6 1, and Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, If a soul sin and commits a trespass against Yahweh and lie unto his neighbor, then wait a minute. I'm I'm lying to my neighbor. I ain't doing nothing against him. Isn't that the attitude of the day? I didn't do nothing against him. I was just lying to my neighbor. I didn't... But it says if a soul do what? Sin and commit a what? Trespass against who? Y'all better stop making light of sin. I'm telling you, don't set up and just be going around doing Israelites wrong now. Uh-uh. And lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered to him to keep. Or in fellowship or in a thing taken away by violence or have deceived, deceived his neighbor. You know, I saw a lot of times we like seeing stuff laying around and then we just take it and pick it up and then we take it to our house. Somebody ask about it and all of a sudden we got amnesia. Four months later, it shows up. Man, that looks just like mine. Oh, I've been having this for the last 20 years. <laughs> Y'all something. Y'all in this? This is how we do things. 
or have found that which was lost, see, and lied concerning it, and swear falsely in any of all these that a man doeth, sinning therein. Then it shall be, because he have sinned and is guilty, that he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which he had deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered to him, him to keep, or the lost thing which he found. For all that about which he has sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle and shall add the fifth part more thereunto. See, because we live in this captivity in this world and stuff, who's trying to do this holy, righteous law nowadays? You can barely even get Israel to, to pay what you owe. See, this is when we use the world to our advantage. Well, I don't like that church no more. I'm going over here. And you're going to lead a very assembly, the only assembly that you know that keeps the commandments. Mm. You ain't leaving us. You leaving y'all. You're going to be appointed your portion with the hypocrites. You see, we're torn around. Israel. Huh? And shall add the fifth part more thereunto and give it unto him to whom it appertaineth in the day of the trespass offering. Shemot 15 2. Yahweh is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my Yah, and I will prepare him a habitation of my, my father's Yah, and I will exalt him. You see, there are many ways you can repay. There's many ways he's vengeance that's being paid. He's set up people to adjudicate matters and stuff in order for the person that is being transgressed against to have a recompense, to have a repayment for that transgression. It ain't whenever you feel like it. You know how it is when you get, see, it's amazing, the hypocrites we are. If we go out here in this wicked world, we take one of these unjust people to court and stuff, first thing we want to do, is we'll set up a bah, 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 plead our case, and then when the wicked judges for the wicked, then next thing you know, we lead, we don't say nothing. We have a little sorry feelings mode, don't say nothing. But if it happened in Israel, we judge the judges, the elders, as wicked. If we owe, I'd be damned if we're gonna pay anything. Tell me I'm telling it. Come on, tell me I'm lying. And we think we're getting by. They're going to be judged by everything that's written in this book. And we do so unjustly and defraud our own brethren. Because we think we're getting by. We treat the wicked with more respect and more honor than we do Israel. Because you're all mad and pissed off because your emotions is disturbed. How many times we heard in the word, you go do that which is right and it'll be well with you. But we can't go do that which is right because I'm hurt. And I'm not yielding anything. Who did you just get finished sinning against? Thank you very much. Because we just read it in the law. And whatsoever you have done unto the least of these, my brother. You done also unto me. See, we gotta get this thing past just looking at each other and just think, okay, I can just take advantage and, and do whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. What you what? Okay, good. We're gonna figure out what the penalty of this sorriness is, because you are pretty sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see, click, 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 click. Let me see, 50 shekels today would probably equal to about, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. all right, 175 ounces of silver. How many times you want to transgress when you have to pay? Uh-oh. Well, it ain't no 175 ounces. No, I'm just making up the top of my head. I'm not a mathematician like Elder Doug and Brother James is. I'm just a dumb guy. I'm just do two plus two is four. 
And my numbers come up to, I don't know, 375 ounces. Here, wow. Sound good to me. We can use it. I mean, after all, the Pope and the Catholic Church done fatten his coffers over all these centuries and stuff. Why can't we just start us one? The NFL be finding the hell out of players and coaches and everything else to keep their coffers stored up. Why don't we just start getting ours stored up? We missed out on a lot of prosperity in Israel by not finding your transgressing self. We always want to plead ignorance. You're going to get pretty smart when you got to cough up them silver. Did I say something wrong? You think wrong? Well, Pat, you ain't what you say is how you say it. Well, I ain't the voice you're going to be quaking at. But I promise you, when I'm up here, I know that everything I say, it ain't my words that's going to be judged. It's going to be the intent of my heart that's going to be judged. And that's what means you make a big mistake. See, your righteousness is of this American world. Your clean ears, your clean mouths, and your filthy lies. Did not say that Yah is going to judge the thoughts and the intents of a man's heart. And you, did you know you could curse Yah in your heart? Mm. See how happy you are when you know the law, though. If you know the law, you ain't got no. You don't want to transgress, huh? Bud said to me the other day, he said, he said, hey, Pastor, check this out. He says, you know, with, with, with people, especially men today, the problem with them is this. Is that, you see, I, I can do a lot of things. Just because I can do it don't mean that I should. I mean, I can have ten wives, but that don't mean I should. I mean, I can put my hand in a blender. And chop it up real good, but that don't mean that I should do it. In other words, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Just because you can do something don't mean it's lawful for you to do it. Like I said in my video, everybody want to go zero to a hundred. Zero to a hundred. Zero, zero to a hundred. You know, there's also a law that says that the husband man must first be a partaker. What do you think he's the first partaker for? So he can have the experience. Mm, mm, mm. So there are many ways you could take vengeance and exact vengeance. Vengeance is not the way that we thought that it was. It's not that we're seeking to even want to be vengeful towards someone, but we're not about to be nobody's doorstep either. We're not about to be nobody's doormat either. Does that make sense? Glory to the king. I'm getting ready for a wedding. That's what we need to be looking like. Pure and holy. Tried and true. Make me a sanctuary. Getting ready for that great day. Who shall be able to stand? Y'all singing it, ain't you? Ain't y'all good? Ain't y'all good? See, if I was um, if I was like T.D. Jakes and Snakes and all these Christian churches and everything, y'all be seated. If I was like them, what I would do is, is I would say, all right, us, let's go ahead and bring that offering plate out now. Because, see, you'll be glad to pay now because you're feeling good after that word. Hey, bring it on out now because the labor is worthy of his hire. Come on, give, give, give. Give it in Jesus' name. Give, give, give. Give it in Jesus' name. Ain't nobody coming up here to give. 
Give, give, give. Give it in Jesus' name. Glory, hallelujah. Give it in Jesus' name. See, only in this world, only in this holiness, you get to preach like this and stay broke as hell. I guess the labor ain't going to get paid today, is he? <laughs> well, well, no, he can't. No, no, Pastor, we supposed to. It says on the first day, let everybody lay in store. Okay, I'll be looking for you tomorrow. <laughs> All right, let's stay in Israel. Hallelujah. Y'all, it's good, ain't he? Hallelujah. We bless his magnificent name. <laughs> 